Hi guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. Today's video is going to be a quick review and more in-depth look into the language arts program that I'm currently using with my eight-year-old. If you're interested in finding out more about this curriculum and how we use it in our homeschool, stay tuned. Okay, so one of the main things that I do want to point out about this curriculum, it is a hardcore publication. So it is something that is most likely being used in public schools. I know a lot of homeschooling families prefer to use curriculum that is built and created for homeschooling only. I just haven't had any luck finding anything that I enjoy or my kids enjoy. This is something that I came across used at a used um, bookstore. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take you guys more in depth into the textbooks. There are five textbooks in this language arts curriculum along with five teacher guides, two workbooks, one spelling book, and one grammar um, workbook. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the textbook so you guys can get a little bit of a look into what it teaches. I'm going to try to go in order and show you guys a little bit into the textbooks. This is the first textbook. Um, so this, again, I don't know if I mentioned it before, it is a first grade level um, language arts program. So what it is, it's pretty much this these textbooks are filled with little readers or stories that you pretty much read and you read one story for the whole entire week and then you have activities to do with these um, stories that you read. So when you start with one of the first stories from the first book, it's going to be something as simple as the hat. It's going to introduce sight words as well as certain phonic sounds. I know this story focuses a lot on the ah sound. So it starts very easy. Um, the stories do gradually start to introduce more phonics and more sight words. So the stories start to get just a little more difficult. Um, it moves very gradual, which I one of, it's one of the things that I do enjoy. Every story also focuses on the author. It talks about, um, it gives you a little area for um, reading comprehension. So you can have your student or your child answer the questions here. It also gives you some other little things to read about and talk about for the story. Um, what I like about it is the making connections area. The making connections area is almost like a cross curricular type of um, activities to go with the story. So sometimes you get writing, social studies or science, and you can choose to do these activities. The teacher guides go more in depth into what to do with these activities. I do usually for every story pick at least one of these to do with my son. So. It's very hands-on. It's something that is very visually beautiful. The illustrations are so cute in all of the stories. As you can see, some of the stories in book one do start to get just a little bit longer, a little bit more sight words, more vocabulary words. You do get vocabulary words for every, um, insight words for every story. You can see them highlighted in yellow down here. Um, so again, this is book one. Each book, at least as far as I know, book one handles about six weeks worth of lessons um, again you want to hang on to one story for the whole entire week so I usually for every story I just consider it a lesson so it's pretty much six six lessons per textbook okay then you have book two book two um, you'll notice it phonetically starts to te teach just a little bit more you get a little bit more into social studies a little bit of science because you have to do the um, how a chick grows the life cycle of a chick um, you get all your words to remember, which are your vocabulary words. Um, again, you do the, um, think and respond. I'm trying to think what else. So you get the making connections area again, where you have more of that cross curricular activities. You have your science connection, your art connection, your writing connection. A lot of the writing connections are a little bit more, I take a more like a draw and write kind of thing. That's usually what I have my son do. Um, so let me get to one of the last stories here. So one of the last stories here is more of a nonfiction about fish and the um, ocean life. So I kind of like that also that not everything in this book is fantasy and illustrated. There's a lot of books or stories in here that are also nonfiction. Um, so again, then you get into, this is the end of the book. It also introduces poems. Again, the teacher guide tells you when to introduce the poems um, of what day of the week when you're focusing on a certain lesson. So that's book two. Then there's book three. And again, I just want to give you guys a look as to how they move. Um, this one, I believe, is a little bit longer. I believe this one has about eight weeks worth of lessons. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven of them. Um, so this one starts off actually with the nonfiction about caterpillars. Again, if you guys notice, the um, stories get a little bit longer, just a little bit more difficult to read. Um, again, you have your little sight words, or not sight words, I'm sorry, your vocabulary words. Um, and it just kind of goes on. This one seems to have a little bit more um, nonfiction stories and then a little bit of fantasy. Um, the readers are beautiful. I feel like the illustrations are beautifully um, illustrated. I love that it gives you facts about the authors for pretty much every single story. Um, I'm trying to think. The end of every story does have, um, or every book does have a little writer's handbook. That shows you how to spell certain words if you need to use that. So this is the one we're actually currently on. This is book four. So book four also handles about seven weeks of lessons. Um, the stories obviously get just a little bit longer. Right now we're actually on the first story, A Bed Full of Cats. Um, it introduces, if you guys can see from the first book, this one introduces a lot more vocabulary words um, along with the sight words. The Even the print is a little bit smaller on the stories. Um, and it just kind of moves on. Um, again, you get some of your nonfiction stories um, along with your little um, fantasy. I think this one, actually, there's a robot story, which actually I'm really excited about. Um, so, yeah. So, like I said, you guys can see how it moves. It goes, you know, from the first book to this book, you can see how much the print just gets a little bit smaller. The stories get a little bit longer. So, obviously, by this point, your child should be reading a lot better. Um so again, um, the teacher guide actually shows you what to teach when it comes to phonics, what to teach when it comes to grammar, spelling, um, and I'll get more into that. So I just want to show you guys real quick. So this is book four, and let me go ahead and do book five real quick. The last book of the uh, language arts program is this book. This is book five. So book five, again, this one I believe actually has eight weeks. Um, I believe it's eight lessons on this book. So this, in this book, you're going to notice that the stories are a lot longer. I believe even when it comes to the vocabulary words, you get a lot more per lesson. Or it's about the same, I guess, from book four. Um, so yeah, so by this point, obviously, you should be reading at a second grade level. Um, I do enjoy these illustrations. I do enjoy most of these stories. My son actually does enjoy this program quite a bit. Um, and I'm actually excited to be starting second at the second grade level. Um, we just feel a little bit behind, but that's okay. Again, we're taking off from book number four. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to show you guys some of the workbooks that come with these stories. Okay, so these are the two main workbooks. This practice book here handles for the first three textbooks. And this one has all the worksheets for the last two books. The way that this works, and the, again, the teacher guide tells you what day of the week to give what activity. So when you start off with lesson number one, which was that story, The Hat, and some of the first pages are just uh, phonics. And again, the teacher guide tells you how to teach all this or do all these teachings. Um, this was for the first story, The Hat. I'll pull it up so you guys... I'll pull it up so you guys can get a better look at it and see how they just kind of go together. Um, so these are going to be for lesson one. Again, you only get three vocabulary words for your um, for that first story. Obviously, phonetically, we're only introducing the ah, the short ah sound. Very simple, very um, very easy. So now this is these would be the activities for that and the actual. Workbooks will tell you lesson one and you pretty much I believe there's about five pages per lesson So one day pretty much one day a week. I believe there's some that you do twice But it just depends like I said, it just depends on the teacher guide So then it would just go to here. So these pages here are going to be for that story So you get your um, spelling practice page you get some phonic practice You get some grammar practice some more phonics practice um, some sight word practice here and then some more phonics practice. Um, the tops of the pages also tells you when it comes to the, for the story, the activities, it's going to tell you what it's handling. So this one's obviously the high frequency words for the hat, phonic words for the hat, um, more phonics here, your spelling for lesson one and, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. And then grammar. So for Doreen, the story, the hat, we're obviously going to be talking about sentences, built, uh, sentences for grammar. 
So that's how this work, um, this book works. So then when you move on to the next story, here you have your vocabulary words for the, for the next story. The next story is called Sam and the Bag. So for that, then obviously your little textbook here or your little workbook is going to be for, let's see, so you find your lesson too. So here you have your little spelling practice, your phonics practice for that story, your grammar, your phonics again, and then your high frequency words or sight words, and then your phonics again, and then you go into, oh, this one has more phonics, and then your spelling for lesson number three. So that's kind of how it goes for each lesson, and that's how these little activity workbooks work um, or coincide with the stories. Again, this, um, this handles pretty much all your worksheets for the lessons. The end, um, and I always tab it out. I don't think I tabbed it out. Oh, um, I did on this one. Both books do have an area for the test for the lessons. So if you go um, in here, you're going to have like for the bed full of cats, which was book number four, you just pull out these two pages. And this is pretty much the test that you would give your um, child for pretty much reading comprehension. We, I know the textbook, I believe the teacher's guy tells you to do this, uh, I think on Wednesdays. I think that's what it says on the teacher guide. I give it to my son on Fridays. We do, we do, he knows that we do the test every Friday. Um, and both books have it at the end of the, the chapter or at the end of, um, let me find it. there it is. So both books have it at the end where you have your test for the story. So here it is, the test for um, the hat. And again, it would be the two pages and it's just more of a reading comprehension. And then you do a little draw and write. Um, so yeah, so everything that you need pretty much, any kind of activity or work um, worksheet is gonna be in these two books. Now let me show you the other um, books. Now the language arts one or the language handbook is pretty much just more of the grammar. So if you're handling sentences for the first area, then, and again, the teacher guide tells you what page to give. So you have your grammar, um, what page to give on what day. So you're handling sentences, which is the first um, theme that you're doing for grammar. So it'll tell you what pages, and usually it's about four pages. Yeah, about four pages that you do. And then you move on to word order. And then same thing. Um, so that's the other thing that you can um, choose to purchase. This is something um, that I just kind of make copies of for my son. Um, this is going to be something that I'm going to be using with all three of my kids. So um, instead of buying another one of these, I just make photocopies of them. Um, I will say that these here, I had already purchased two sets of each. So I had already purchased two sets of the first book and two sets of the two. So I have a set for each one of my kids. The only ones that I don't are these two. And it's just because they're thinner and I figured it'd be easier just to make copies of. So again, this is the grammar one. And now let me show you guys the spelling one. So this is just gonna be a little bit of additional practice for the spelling words. Um, and that's all it has. And pretty much for every lesson, you get two pages. So you get your spelling words practice, and then you get a little uh, spelling word sort where you just get your words and um, not necessarily cut them out, but you can just write them in in the area that they go in. Um, so again, for every lesson, you just get two pages. So these are the activity books that um, this curriculum comes with. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is instead of going through every single teacher guide, I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit into book number four, because that is where we're at right now. Um, and I'm so sorry for the angle. My tripod is currently broken, so I'm using it broken and it's just, yeah, it's kind of driving me nuts. But let me go ahead and show you guys into the teacher guide for um, book number four. So the way that these books are set up, it goes day by day. It does give you a little bit of a week and a glance as far as what we're going to be handling let me show let me get to it it breaks it it gives you the week at the glance at a glance so for a bed full of cats which is the story that we're on right now it's going to give you for day one pretty much everything that you're going to be focusing on for that day um again as far as oral um language uh reading out loud whatever it is phonetic awareness your word work which consists of phonics spelling your um sight words and your vocabulary words and then reading your reading comprehension and fluency and then you get your language arts, which is um, you do some of your writing and your grammar. So it kind of breaks everything up like that per day. So like that, um, you kind of know already what you're going to be doing every single day. Um, so let me go ahead and go into the day. So the day on the side here is going to give you the day at, the at a glance. 
It's going to start off your day with your oral language. So it's going to even tell you what to say in the morning, what to write on your board. Um, a lot of these I sometimes build on the whiteboard and I kind of sound them out with him, have him read them. Um, so for word work or phonics, um, we are focusing on the long vowel E. Um, you do some word building and I'll show you guys at the end of this, or not the end, I'll show you guys in a little bit how considering I don't have any of this stuff for this curriculum, how I've just managed to make my own. Um, so word building, you have your student or your child uh, build their sight words or their um, vocabulary words. So it kind of, it goes very in depth. And then if you guys can see down here, it tells you what worksheet to give. And then after your lesson here, you can give them the uh, little phonic, um, phonics worksheet um, and so forth and so on. Then you have a little bit of a writing um, activity to give them. And then you can start working on your grammar. Now for grammar, we're focusing, this week we're actually focusing on holidays and um, the capitalization of when you write holidays. So that's the worksheet that I'm supposed to give him from his activity sheet or from his uh, language uh, workbook. So again, and then it goes into day two and it's pretty much all the same thing. It breaks it all up for you. You have to read your story today. Um, talk about the story, do some comprehension. Again, your spelling vocabulary words to build. Um, for that day, I wrote all these sentences on my whiteboard and then I had him go and circle his vocabulary words from the sentences. Um, again, it tells you what activity sheets to give. So yeah, it's very, um, it's very teacher intensive, but it is something that if you do have the teacher guide, you're not really guessing as to what you have to do next. It tells you everything. And um, you get to read the poem, talk about the poem, and then you could actually do one of the activities from the Making Connections area, which with my son, I believe we did a, a book full of pets. So he got to draw a picture of his favorite pet and write about it. Um, so yeah, so it's just very um, detailed. Um, each teacher guide also has a little area where it gives you pages that you could actually print out um, for extra practice. So these are like little sentence building um, strips that you can photocopy and just have your child work on it. It tells you what lesson it is for. I mean this, other, oh, there it is. It also, for every story, it gives you little character um, cutouts that you can just kind of photocopy. And there's a certain day, the teacher guide will tell you um, what day to give this to your student to have them color it, cut it out, and then um, what I had my son do was um, color them and then I was going to have him retell the story to my other son um, to see how well he understood the story. So pretty much for every, oh sorry, for every story it's going to give you a little bit of a cutout also to make a copy out of. So I just think it's super cute. A lot of the, because it is a, the teacher guide, it is going to have even like your um, sight words that you could or your vocabulary words you can print out and um, have your student cut them out like flashcards. I don't do that. I actually, I'm going to show you guys how I just make my own. Um, so that is um, as much as I can tell you guys about the teacher guide. It's just kind of the same as you go on per lesson. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you guys is how, considering I don't have some of these components that go with this curriculum, um, how I just make my own. So this is what I use for my son when we work with this curriculum. I've printed all of these on cardstock. This is how I've made his, um, the flashcards for his vocabulary words and sight words. And then... These are some that I found on Teacher Paid Teachers. I believe I paid like $5, but it's a whole set of just phonetic um, flashcards, and I absolutely love them. So because we're focusing on the E, long E sound, I pulled these aside so we can work from. I also, as far as these go, I kind of just made my own, and they're just printed again on cardstock. I laminated them because I wanted to have something that I can use with my youngest one as well. Um, and she could actually, and I made it so she can trace the letters. Um, these, you don't have to trace them. I believe it tells you that you can have your, your, uh, student trace them with your finger or whatever, but I wanted to make it more traceable. As far as the word building ones, I just printed out the alphabet on cardstock and I believe I did it, but one and a half by one and a half, um, size. And these are the ones that I use instead of these for word building. And I just kind of set up the letters that they give me for the week. I set them up in here and I have them use this little pocket chart, which is one of the little standing ones. And I'm sorry, again, my tripod is broken, so I can't really move it. One of the little stand, self-standing pocket charts that I got from, 
I want to say, I think I got these from Walmart at the back to school sales. Um, and it's just a small pocket chart. So this is what I set up on his desk and I have him build his spelling words and sight words with the letters given. So this is how I use it. This is what I made um, since I don't have these. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys real quick how I set it up inside of his work box. So one of the things, sorry guys. So one of the things that I do is inside his work box, all he really keeps in his work box is his textbook, um, his extra practice notebook. These are the extra printables of supplementary work that he can do. This isn't something that I make him completely um, complete. Um, so it's not something that I worry too much about. If we have time to do some supplementary work, then we'll do it. If it's not like for some, for instance, like these aren't completed yet and some of these aren't completed yet. It's no big deal. Um, so yeah, so this is just extra supplementary work. So I keep that in his work box. I also keep this language arts um, folder. This is where I stick all his, the pages that I make photocopies of from the grammar notebook. And then whatever pages he has from here, this I keep with my teacher guide. And for the whole entire week, what I do is I just pull out the pages that we're gonna be working on for that week. And then I go to the back and pull out the test, the two test sheets for that week. And this I keep in my desk and then I just stick the pages in here. So like that he doesn't have all of this inside his work box. So all the pages for the week are all pretty much labeled. I just kind of label them up here. Um, I go through the t uh, the teacher guide and I just figure out which ones I'm gonna he has to do on what day and I just write it on the top of the page. So that's how I set it up in his work box. He also has his language arts. He also has his language arts notebook. This is a uh, little notebook that we created. Um, we what I have him do every Monday is before we read the story, I have him write down the genre, um, the author's name, and the words to remember. So all his vocabulary words go in here. And then that's pretty much it. And then usually on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll have him do one of the other little areas of the uh, making connections area. So here, like a, again, we chose to do a book full of pets. So he had, a, the activity was more like a draw and write where he had to pick his favorite pet, draw a picture about it. And he was supposed to write about it. He didn't end up getting to that. Um, so I just kind of set it up ahead of time for all the different stories. Um, so like that, I don't have to do this every week. I already just kind of sat down one day and did all of them. So that's just the way that we do it. So this is kept inside his work box. And then inside his spelling work box, I keep the spelling practice book. And this again is a copy that I made of the actual, the real one. And it's just because like, again, I'm gonna be using this with my other two kids. So it's not something, I, something that I wanna reuse. So all his spelling pages are here for um, the next two books. So that is what is, what is kept inside his work box. I don't have the little readers that you're supposed to purchase with this program. Um, when I found them on eBay, they were just a little too expensive. It's 36 little readers and they were just a little too expensive. But what I did find was, and these are, these are kindergarten level. These are some that I found, um, at a used, uh, bookstore. And these actually, these come in a big workbook style of, uh, book. I don't know how to explain it. I guess I would, I would only be able to explain it if I can show you guys, but it just comes in a big book and you have to, the whole book has these readers in them and all you do is tear them um, tear the pages out, cut them in half and then staple them together. Um, but I love these cause they're very inexpensive and it comes with a lot of readers. So these are some, these are kindergarten level again, like I said, but these here, these are from the Scott, uh, Scott Forsman phonics system. And, um, these little readers coincide with well, some of them do with some of the phonics that are being taught in the, um, the books that we're using. So like for instance, for this week, we're focusing on the long E vowel sound. So here I was able to find this one that focuses on the long E vowel sound. So this is a little decodable book that he's been reading actually this whole entire week, um, a pack full of seeds. So, and I label them, the green ones are first grade level and the yellow ones are kindergarten level. So I have a ton of them. And these also came in a big um, book, kind of like this one. Um, and I believe I purchased it for like $3 or something. And uh, kind of how this one, if you look at the back of one of these workbooks, you get like the little, you get a few little readers. Let me see if I can find them. Cause I know this, these books have them. Oh, there they go. So see, it gives you little readers. Um, well, these came 
from a textbook like this that all it had in it were the little readers. So all you had to do was tear the, tear the pages out and then fold them in half. And um, that's pretty much how they came in the book. They pretty much came like this. All you had to do was tear them out and then fold them in half. And there you have your little, um, little reader. Um, so yeah, so again, I have the kindergarten level and then I do have the first grade level. And again, it's for me, I feel like it's cheaper than buying or less, ex I shouldn't say cheaper. It's less expensive to buy them like this and to buy a bunch of, you know, like the, the, I forgot what they're called. Like the actual books that you buy for like $4 at the reading ones. I forgot what they're called. Um, at the bookstore. So this is definitely a way cheaper way to go. And I mean, that's just what they are. They're just like little readers. And I mean, if you guys know me, you guys know that I'm, I'm a simple person. I don't even mind that the pages aren't colored. My kids don't mind that the pages aren't colored. They actually think these stories are real cute. So yeah, so I'm gonna try to link all this in the description box. So if you guys are interested in these little readers, um, I've purchased mine on Amazon, so I can definitely link those in the description box. But um, for now, guys, that is it. That's all I have for you guys today. Again, let me know if you guys have any questions on any of the curriculum that I just showed you guys. Um, I'm, again, I wanna apologize for my tripod being all sorts of crazy today. Um, if you guys have questions, please let me know. And for now, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.